Hey sea dragons. In this video we're going to practice observational drawing. Observational drawing just means looking at something and trying to draw it. So we're going to carefully and slowly follow what we're seeing and copy that with our pencil. The type of observational drawing we're going to do is called slow contour line drawing and that means we're going to go slowly just making lines to copy what we see. This is just one type of drawing and in other videos I'll show you other types of drawing. Let's get started. I'm going to be drawing my hand to show you how to practice observational drawing using slow contour lines. So I need to choose a position for my hand that I want to draw and I'm going to give you a tip. You should not try to draw your hand flat because it's going to look very flat and boring. You want to choose a position uh, that is, it's not so flat, it's deeper, it has more movement to it, so I think I'll choose something like this. Uh, you might do a thumbs up, or um, maybe a peace sign could be good, because if you look here, my hand has depth here. It's going to be a lot more interesting because some fingers are over other fingers, but if I go like this, and I try to draw that, it's just going to look very flat and it'll look like I traced my hand and we don't want that. We want it to look like a 3D hand when we're done. So I'm going to uh, choose a position, something like this. Now you need to choose one part to start with. I like to start down at the wrist, choose one side of the wrist here. I'll go ahead and choose this left side. And what we want when we're done is about a life-size hand over here on the paper, something like that. But we're not tracing our hand. We want to look at one little piece at a time, copying one small piece at a time, looking back and forth from our hand to our drawing, going slowly, and trying to complete the whole hand in one position. So let's start down here at the wrist. Looking at one little piece at a time, I'm just going to make this small line here. After that, I'll choose the next small line that I can build off of that. So I'm breaking off one piece here. I'll place it on the paper. I see it's a little bit angled. It's not quite straight up, so I'm going to make a slightly angled line like this. And it's about that long. So I've copied the angle and the length of this section of my wrist, just with one simple line just looking carefully at that angle and size. Now if I go to the next part, I'll do the back of the thumb here. I'm not going to go all the way because I see there's a slight bump. This is slightly rounded and then there's kind of a second bump here. So I'm just going to look at one little piece at a time, just a really small piece. And I can also see it changes angle a little bit from this to this. So I'll change the angle a little bit try to make it the right size. Now we're up to here and I'll continue the next part. So I'm going to go up to the knuckle. You can see when I put my hand and my pencil over here on my hand, this is actually helping me think about the shape I need to make with the pencil. So now I'm at the top of the knuckle and you can tell I'm going really slowly. See, so I've just done a little bit. Drawing is a slow process if you want to do it right. You have to be careful. So I keep checking over here what I want to make for that shape. You know, when you've practiced a lot, you don't need to do this. But it helps to think about the shape that you need to make right before you do it. Kind of imprinting it in your mind with that motion and then recreating it over on the paper. So now I'm up to about here. And I'm continuing to see how this angle changes. See, now it curves out. So I'm going to copy how that curves out. And if you think a hand is too hard to start with, you don't need to start with the hand. I wanted to show a hand because of the artists that we're looking at right now. Um, but you could start with something like a candy wrapper or a leaf. Anything that is not too simple is actually going to be easier for practicing this because um, when your lines are curved and wrinkly, it's, it's, less, uh, it's harder to see if you've made a mistake when you do this. 
So all these wrinkles of the thumb, they don't have to be perfect. If I get them pretty close, nobody's going to know that uh, it's a little bit off because they're wrinkly and irregular. You won't see um, that it's not perfect because it's, it's just not perfect in real life. So when I do a curve like this, my eyes were going back and forth as I was drawing that, I was drawing slowly, but letting my eye go back and forth between the paper and the hand. And I'm looking at each little piece, just adding on to what we've already done each time. There's lots of wrinkles in here. Some of them are lighter, so I'm lifting up the pencil a little bit more. I'm going to go back up here and start to make that palm. So I see that connects to a line here in the thumb. That's this line. The line of the palm comes out just about there. And I'm looking back and forth as I'm just starting this line slowly. My eyes are going back and forth. Just doing this section. Now it really changes angle there. So I stop and I check it before I do it. And now I can go ahead and put that in. And I'm just going to keep breaking off a little piece and building it back on. And I've written those tips up at the top of the paper here um, because these are the main things you want to keep in mind when you're doing slow contour drawing. So as I've said, I'm looking back and forth. That means my eyes look at the hand and the drawing, the hand and the drawing. Like in two seconds, I'll look back and forth about five times and then draw. Copying one small piece at a time. You see me checking one small piece of the hand then building it on. I'm going slow. I'm not just saying, here's a finger and making one big shape like that. I'm looking at one piece and going slowly. And my hand hasn't moved this whole time. Also, my head hasn't moved. I'm holding one position. If I moved my head to the other side of the hand, it's going to look completely different. So you need to stay in one position for it to actually look like a completed 3D hand when it's done. Let's continue. You can see I'm stopping and starting again where angles change. I don't always lift up my pencil if I feel comfortable with going ahead with that line. And I am drawing in pencil so I can erase if I need to, but I'm just practicing so I'm not worried about making a mistake and needing to change it. I'm going to go back up here and put this finger in and then work my way back down to here. And by the time I get here, this may be wrong. I may want to change something when I get over here where lines meet up back together. We'll see when we get there. But because the pointer finger is really important in this gesture that I'm making, I'm going to go ahead and start building that on. And for from where I'm looking, it's a little bit different than the camera. The pointer finger comes out the outside line here comes out about here on the thumb. It's behind the thumb, comes out about here at that angle. And I'm trying not to do too many sketchy lines. Those Some people call those hairy lines because they end up looking all fuzzy. I'm trying to make smooth lines and just draw instead of sketch. There is a bit of a difference between drawing and sketching. You want to look like you have control over your pencil eventually. So slowing down and making drawn lines that are smooth and controlled uh, will add to your artistic skills and make it look like you have more masterful control of your pencil. Now I see this finger intersects this line of the thumb about here. So I'm going to put that line in. And it's, I also see that line before I'm drawing it. I'm checking where does it go? I see it comes to about here from where I'm looking on the pointer finger. So it's overlapping here. Now I'm pretty sure I know where that goes, so I'm going to put it in. And I have practiced this a lot, so it's going to be really hard when you start out. But just keep these things in mind. If something doesn't go right, think about which one of these tips that you might have forgotten 
you might say, oh, I went too fast, that's why that ended up like that. For instance, right here, I just made a mistake because this finger should come in front of this finger. So I need to make a space there so that this finger comes out from the tip of the thumb and overlaps this one like this. And this, you can break into lots of little lines too to get that curve correct. Now I see this finger goes under the thumb, comes out about here, and curves into the fingernail. And it's kind of pressed into the palm there, it kind of disappears under the palm. Now there's some details I haven't put in yet, like the lines across the index finger or the thumbnail. I can add those in later when I'm sure that I have the shapes where I want them. Just going to continue kind of working in one direction, going around the hand. So now I'm back to this side of this finger where it's also pressed against the pinky finger. So there's a little line for my ring down there. I don't know if you can see that. Pinky finger comes curving over this way. Let's see, so this curve of the pinky is above that fingernail. I'm looking at that relationship. Where is it in relation to these other parts of the fingernails down here? That curve of the pinky needs to be above that and to the corner of it a little bit up here. Now it comes down, changing that angle going down. You can also look at where the fingertips line up. Comes around. And looking at this line compared to this line, they're not parallel. This one's angled a little bit away, so they're not quite the same direction. They're just a little bit angled apart. So now, as I was saying, when I get over here, it might not meet up with this side of the hand quite right. I think when I first drew this line, this was too narrow. The hand curves out a lot more between here and here. These, this is a big curve. These were too parallel, this and this. So I can see that because I'm looking back and forth between my hand and my drawing. So I know this line is wrong. I don't know that the pinky is right, but I think it's close enough. I think it's about the right size with the other fingers. So now I'm getting to where this hand curves around and meets the other side of the wrist. one piece at a time. I'm looking back and forth. When you see me continuing to draw, that's because my eye is looking back and forth as I'm drawing, which takes lots of practice, but I hope you'll start practicing that because it'll really help you draw anything you want to draw. Let's see, any details we missed? Missing the pinky nail here looking back and forth as I'm putting this in, looking at one little piece at a time. Lines of the index.
can see if I look at the camera, I see you also see some lines in there. Oh, I missed my finger inside there, point of my finger. Just a little curve here. And the thumbnail. Also the wrinkles on the back of the thumb knuckle. Put those in and then I think we're done. So whatever hand position you're doing, whatever hand position you're doing, it's going to be different than this. You're going to follow it in your own way, whatever makes sense for you to break off pieces and build them back on. This is just to show an example of these techniques that I'm using, looking back and forth, going slowly, and how that helps me see the hand how it really is, and not just how I think a, a hand should look. I see some more details of lines in the fingers that I'm going to put in lightly. They're very light lines, so remember you can change the pressure of your pencil so that they don't look too dark and don't stand out too much. And some more wrinkles of the wrist down here. There, I'm satisfied with that. I hope this helps you practice drawing by looking. Remember, you don't have to do a hand. You can practice with something else that you want to practice with. I would suggest something that has organic lines, something irregular. Don't try to do a box or an egg or something that is very simple because if it's not perfect, it's going to be easy to tell that it's not perfect. So with the hand, this is not perfect, but you can't tell that it's far from perfect because these are very wrinkly lines and you can just draw them with the natural motions of your hand and it will feel natural. Whereas if you try to draw something with straight lines or perfect lines, uh, your hand does not move in those perfect lines very easily. So you need uh, different techniques. So try something like a hand. Uh, if you feel like you did okay with the hand, try a face. That would be great. Um, clothes can work well because they're wrinkly and organic also. Um, also let me know if you have any questions. Reach out to me on Schoology. And I can't wait to see what you draw. Good luck.